games, leading the Southwest Conference, looking for a bowl bid. And the second reason that they're happy is the fact that they have the leading candidate for the prestigious Heisman Trophy in the 22-year-old back from Tyler, Texas, number 20, Earl Campbell. And what a player. He scored 14 touchdowns this year, 36 in his career, nearly 1,400 yards rushing on plays like this. He's averaging 6.4 yards a carry. Of all the total rushing yards of this undefeated Texas team, he has rushed for nearly 50% of it. I'm impressed. And I'm happy to be back in Texas. I love it here. I'm Chris Schenkel in Austin, the capital city. So today we look forward to the 67th meeting between the Baylor Bears and the Texas Longhorns. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Schlitz. If you don't have Schlitz, you don't have gusto. By the all-new 1978 Chevrolets. Now it's your Chevrolet dealers everywhere. By the investment firm of E.L. Putnam and Trucks, people listen. And by Texaco. Wanting to keep your trust for 75 years, and they have. It's a beautiful afternoon. 70 degrees, playing on the artificial turf. Expect a crowd of 70,000, and we must remember that the Baylor Bears, although they've had a very long season, their record is not great. They are four and five. They are upset-minded, as they've done in two of the past three years, downing the Texas Longhorns. In the Southwest Conference, they've been a factor over the years, winning it uh, not too long ago uh, with Grant Taft as the coach. But right now, they're near the bottom, as you see. But at the top is the undefeated Longhorns, 6 and 0, closely followed by the powerful Arkansas Razorbacks and Texas A&M. So Texas, with a win today, could at least clinch a tie. They have yet to meet Texas A&M in one of the really fine games that we've seen in recent years was the Arkansas game in Fayetteville. And we were hosted in Arkansas by our colleague who does such a fine job on our telecast, former president of the American Football Coaches Association, and just a great fellow, Frank Broyles. Frank, that Earl Campbell is something. Earl, we, uh, we would consider Earl as a franchise. That would mean he could take an average football team, Chris, to a, na to a championship and maybe a national championship. A player to come along once in a coach's lifetime. He combines incredible speed, size, and uh, quickness that uh, very few people have ever had. Look at him go here. One thing about him, Frank, is that uh, more than half of his yardage has been gained after he's been hit at least one time. These are plays where the line really made the hole that you could have run Bebo, their mascot, through. Earl Campbell will ricochet through the line, Chris, but when he gets in the open field, as on this play, he's really poetry in motion. You know what's amazing about this undefeated Texas Longhorn team coached by your formal pupil and assistant Freddie Akers is the fact, as we, the Baylor Bear has made his appearance, is the fact that they have done this nine straight wins with four different quarterbacks. That's Kelly. He's a two-year-old brown bear. You'll be seeing him later. I hope he doesn't get loose. <laughs> well, it is unbelievable that a team could play with four quarterbacks and still amass a victory of 38 points per game as to opposition's possibly eight. But uh, Freddie has convinced his team that they're going to give it to Earl Campbell inside and outside. If they crowd him, they're going to throw it deep, and that's a tough offensive package. Against uh, Arkansas in the Texas victory, they used Randy McEachern. He will not play today. He's had a problem. They're probably saving him for the A&M game. But we do have a very competent uh, quarterback in the name of Sam Ainsley. Ainsley, rather, number seven. McEachern, maybe, but I doubt it. Well, Freddie says that he's going to save McEachern if he can for Texas A&M. The doctors have cleared him for this ball game if needed. But Ansley was a beer quarterback in high school, very successful. He went in last week, ran for one touchdown, and passed for two in his first game. You can't beat that. All right. Now, here on the artificial turf at Memorial Stadium, a capacity of 78,000, these are the Baylor Bears. Traveling out of the northeast here in Texas from the beautiful city of Waco to Austin with a four and five record. Grant Taft is their head coach, a fine man. He's done a fine job, but it's been a long season. But they do have a win over powerful Kentucky. So they know how to play. And Frank, I think I heard you say earlier that they are physical. They are a physical football team. The coaches in this conference know that. Last year, Texas rushed for only 14 yards, which is the lowest in the Darrell Royal era. But they, they gamble on defense, they take chances, and Grant Taft says they didn't come to play for a tie or play conservative. They're going out to win. And now, the University of Texas, the number one team in the nation in their burnt orange jerseys, 
60 of them coming out, including 14 seniors, who will be playing their last game before the home fans here in Austin. They have a road game, sure, but for Earl Campbell, for instance, trying to help his team remain the will be giving it his all. That's the 300 member Texas band, the Golden Wave band of Baylor is here as we look at this huge stadium. We're going to take a pause and then the kickoff. Look at the book. Look at the book, Bill. That a boy. We're back again. You're looking at Percy Penn who is a Dallas school administrator and one of the very fine Southwest Conference officials indicating that the green and gold of Baylor, they have won the toss, they elect to receive. Now the sun's starting to come out and we've just received an updated weather report. Here in Austin, Texas, the capital city, we have a temperature of 70 degrees, make it 80 degrees. And here are some of the other players coming out on the field and Fred Akers, who played for you, Frank Burrells, and then coached for you. He's a very cool, calm, collected young man who knows how to get the best out of his team. As we look at the series record, 50 wins for Texas, 12 for Baylor, and four ties. But Baylor has won two out of the last three. And that gives them the confidence Grant Pass says that you need. When you're going to play the number one team in the nation, Chris, you better be ready and better believe that you can do it. And Texas is definitely the number one team in the nation. You can look at their imposing statistics and find out. One of the great cricketers in the country is this man. Today he's on crutches because of a thigh muscle pull. Russell Erksleben, who has set a record of a 67-yard field goal in the NCAA. And look at him. And he went out Thursday and tried a 20-yarder and re-injured himself. Here's the record kick against Rice, Frank. 67 yards, and the fans that were there said he cleared the upright by at least five yards. But what Texas will miss him today because Erksleben is not only a scoring threat from the field goal from anywhere on the uh, their, on Baylor's side of the field, but when he punts that ball, he gets Texas the field position that need to get some scoring on board. And as we look at the Texas cheerleaders, and there are many of them in the Big T, the University of Texas. And they are happy, as we told you earlier. And I think you'll be pleased that you join us in the second part of our doubleheader here on ABC because you'll see at least one great football player, and that is Earl Campbell, number 20. He's not on the field at the moment. We have Steve uh, McMichael, who's going to do the kicking instead of Erksleben, who, as you saw and heard Frank Broyles indicate, is injured. Number 27, Greg Hawthorne, who is a fullback, is deep. Greg can move as we uh, see a kicking shoe being tied on, and McMichael, who the kicker, who is a tackle, sometimes keeps the shoe on while he's playing tackle. Well, I guess that doesn't... Uh, Hurt your play at all. He can run. It won't bother him. He's one of the better football players in the league. One of Darrell's outstanding recruits on last year's freshman team. Played a lot as a freshman last year, tight end. Hawthorne is deep, number 27. He's from Fort Worth, Texas, a junior, 221 pounds. With 4-5 speed, Chris. And there's McMichael, number 99. Defensive right tackle, 6'2", 234. He's from Freer, Texas. Well, we're having a little trouble with the wind, which is uh, gusting at about 14 miles an hour, coming from out of the south, which is from right to left. And now with the sun coming out and a blue sky, it's a great afternoon for the Southwest Conference battle. McMichael now to the ball. When it's touched, the clock will start. Now the excitement of NCAA college football begins. This is Hawthorne. A good run back of that long kick by McMichael. And he pulls his way forward up to the 23-yard line. And he was stopped by Sin line of the Texas Longhorns. So the Baylor Bears now will snap it first. And the officials said that he touched at the 22. In the background, that's the Golden Wave Band. They'll be appearing at halftime, as will the show band of the Southwest, the Texas Band. Going to the far side is Bo Taylor, number five of Dallas. From the 22, the quarterback, Greg Wood, on a quick handoff to Greg Hawthorne, who's involved now in two plays, running of the kickoff. As we look at the Baylor offense, first the line, there's Ronnie Lee, number 82. Arlen Thompson is the offensive tackle, 51-68. David Sledge, the offensive guard, and the center, Ron Barnes, a good one. John Kramer, another fine player at offensive guard. Brent Jones is 72, a tackle. And here they are now, 
They gain the yard on the play, so it's going to be second down and nine. Davidson, Tommy Davidson, son of Cotton Davidson, to the far side. Wood looking. The pitch. And it's good to Tommy Davidson. And, Frank, you're familiar with this young man's dad. I don't want to make you feel old. <laughs> I, I recruited him many years ago as a quarterback for Baylor. You know he went on and played professional football with Oakland. But Grant Pass said he was going to back the Texas defense back a little bit with passing early. Second down completion. Very fine throw and catch for Wood. And that's the initial first down of this game. With 14 minutes remaining in the first quarter, the game just underway. Taylor and Davidson set away from the line. They keep it on the ground to Hawthorne, 27. Hawthorne up to about the 39. Now, let's look at the backfield of Baylor. Get an up-close look at them here. There's the quarterback, number nine, Greg Wood. He's from Jackson, Mississippi. And now David Seaburn, the Baylor tailback from Austin, Texas. Hawthorne from Fort Worth. And Bo Taylor is from Dallas, Texas. And there's Tommy Davidson, Cotton's son, number 19. So we have a second down and seven now. And the Baylor Bears feel they can run it against the tough Texas defense as Seaburn moves it forward. Seaburn from Austin stopped by Ricky Churchman for the... Texas Longhorns, Bones, sure, a great one, number 77. McMichael, whom you saw kick off, and 86, Tim Campbell. Those are the four men up front. Copeland Taylor, Martignoni are the linebackers for Texas. We have Hatchet, Blackwood, Churchman, and Johnny Johnson, a fine safety man. As we look at Greg Wood, the Baylor quarterback, with the second, first, and 10 now, he'll snap it from his own 46. A little razzle-dazzle, pitching at the last minute on the option to Hawthorne. And Churchman again on the tackle. And the Baylor Bears, Frank Royals, are in Texas territory. You can tell they're geared up for this ball game. They've come out and thrown on second down for a first down. Ran three plays and had a first down. And now they've got second and two. Against the fourth team in the country in scoring defense and the third in rushing. All right, Davidson. And in the slot is Bo Taylor, the near side of the field. They two yards, and trying to get it was junior Greg Hawthorne. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, and that is probably it. Lance Taylor, middle linebacker, 32 of Texas from El Paso, made the stop. There you see him, number 32. And, uh, well, official said he gained a yard, getting to the 46-yard line, so now it's going to be a third down and a little more than one. Hawthorne now four, four carries, 13 yards, Taylor is out of the lineup, number 587. Jerry Stockton is in. Let's see if we have a trick play on a power eye formation. No trickery there. It's very close. A marker is down to the near side in the Baylor Tech field. Let's get a playback on 77 Shearer. Brad Shearer is second in, total, in the total tackles for the Texas football team and for a down lineman. That's most unusual. Here he spits, splits two blockers. One of them is Ron Lee, 250-pound tight end who's playing fullback on the power eye. There's a better look at Brad Shearer. Oh, he's so, a great one. Isn't he, though? Oh. He can put pressure on the pass, and he uses his hands most effectively. But on that play on a short yard... The defense are taught to lower their shoulder and penetrate in the backfield, and he did just that. He'll get a good grade on Monday. There is a procedure call against the Baylor Bears from Waco, Texas. So that brings the ball back just inside their own territory. We'll call it the 49. The down will remain the same. It'll be third down and six. 19 coming to the near sideline. Tommy Davidson in play of course and the slot is Bo Taylor number five back in the lineup no score in the game 11.48 to go first quarter Baylor and White Texas in the burnt orange good call the South Fork quarterback Red Wood on a beautiful fake Frank Royals gets the first down that was an incredible fake by Wood as he faked the Hawthorne he carried out his fake into the line and Texas is linebacker Copeland was split out to the outside and he turned and chased the rainbows inside and Wood came outside. Here's the replay from the inside, from the end zone camera. It looks exactly like Hawthorne has the ball. He put it in his stomach and then pulled it out at the last minute. And now with a first down snap. The ball is at the 41, Bo Taylor. Greg Hawthorne carrying on the play from the Texas 41. See Hawthorne, 27 in white, and Brad Shear, 
as you might expect, was at the bottom. Uh, they gained a half a yard. We'll call it one. So it's going to be a second down and nine as the Baylor Bears, uh, decided underdogs in this game, are going against, as Frank said, the third rushing defense team in the country, allowing only 85 yards rushing per game. They've only allowed eight points in scoring per game, so there's fifth in total defense. Baylor has some momentum going right now. Some two, new, two new backfield men, 30, Frank Pollard, and number 44, Gary Blair, on a second down and nine. Wood throws. And it looked like a Baylor player could have used a saddle here in Texas on that play, Frank. That was big Ronnie Lee, 250-pound tight end, who is a cousin of Earl Campbell's by chance. The officials did not want to call that play. Actually, Ronnie Lee caught it and ran two or three steps with it, was jarred loose from the ball. But as customary and historically, the officials take somewhat the easy way out and declared an incomplete pass. Grant Tav, that is the Baylor coach. Riding uh, Lee on the play was Ricky Churchman. It's going to be a third down and nine. No score. Stumbling Wood recovering. Loose ball. Let's see if the ball was blown dead. Tim Campbell knocked it loose. And the Texas Longhorns resourceful as ever. The ball changes hands on a turnover. And now we'll get an opportunity to look at the offense of the number one team in the country. Wood was on a rollout pattern, but Texas had both receivers covered. He was just wrapped in by Tim Campbell, who is the leading pass rusher for the Texas football team. Younger brother of Earl Campbell. Thank you for the sign. All right, now from their own 48. First and ten following a fumble recovery. No score. Texas with the ball. Hansley handing off on the play. Quick opener, and it was Johnny Ham Jones, number 25 who carried it. By the way, Ham Jones is number 25. Lamb Jones is number 26. And neither of us know her name. Lamb Jones, Olympic gold medal winner of Montreal, number 26, is from Lampasas, Texas, thus Lamb Jones. Ham, number 25, is from Hamlet, Texas, thus his nickname, given to him by the now athletic director, Daryl Royal. It's the second and six. <laughs> Earl Campbell, a Heisman Trophy hopeful, carried on the play, and Jerry Harrison, number 33, from Caldwell, Texas, was in on the stop, along with 99, Alan Stone. There's a look at Campbell, who sort of just shuffles his way back to the huddle, not in a hurry. <laughs> he's walking slow, but when he gets the football under his arm, he's an incredible runner. So with the ball now at the Baylor 46, we have a third down and four. Lamb Jones to the far side, number 26. Third down and four, Texas first possession. Hansley, intended for Lamb, number 26. Incomplete is Tony Green covered. As we now look at the offensive line of the Longhorns, Steve Hall, number 85, he's the tight end. These are great shots because they're without helmets and you get an opportunity to see just what these young Texas Longhorns look like. Ingraham, number 73, the guard. This is the man that starts the offense, the hub of it. Yarbrough, a famous name in Texas football. Stuttered, number 74, offensive tackle. Okay, now we have Ted Costanza, the punter in the lineup. And Howard Fields is deep for the Baylor Bears and the Baylor Bear defense on Texas's first possession forced them to punt. Oh, what a beauty. Two officials marking the departure of the ball across the sideline. They're lining it up right now. And soon we'll know exactly where it was out of bounds at about the nine. We'll see the snap after this. See what's new today. It's Good News America, Chevy's new size Malibu. Hey. Good news about size, good news about room, good news about styling too. Chevrolet's new size Malibu is just full of good news about room and ride and comfort and EPA mileage estimates. And that's a lot of good news. It's good news, America. Chevy's new size Malibu. Chevy's new size Malibu. Chevy's new size Malibu. 
Excuse me, ma'am. We'd like to take away their Schlitz and have them try our beer. You want to take away their Schlitz? You want to take away their Gusto? <laughs> You're cute. Dumb, but cute. You want to take away their Schlitz? Their Gusto? You're going to end up a cornerstone in a high-rise. <laughs> They're going to turn you into an off-ramp on the interstate. Take away their Gusto. If you don't have Schlitz, you don't have Gusto. Probably you don't have beer. Schlitz. High school activities programs will attract 10 million participants this year. Nearly 50% of the student body of most schools will be involved in the interscholastic program. The National Federation of State High School Associations requests your support for this important part of the school curriculum. That's the 300 member show band of the Southwest that you'll be seeing at halftime. They are musically representing the number one team in their country. One possession, the Texas Longhorns, they had to punt. 37 yards, but more important, it went out of bounds at the nine. First and 10 now for Baylor. Bo Taylor and Davidson set away from the line. Wood is the quarterback, number nine on a keeper. All right, Greg Wood, who against Rice completed 10 of 11 passes, is showing that, that he can run as we get a replay from the end zone. He uh, Wood fakes to Hawthorne and leaves the ball in there. Hawthorne makes a good fake, and again, Texas went for the fake, and Wood makes a couple miss him in a very good play. We're waiting for the referee, Percy Penn, to give us the reason why they put the ball back uh, nearer the 10 than the 9. Evidently, he blew the whistle on the fake. It, he had blown the whistle on the fake of the dive back. An error by the official cost Baylor that first down. That's the only time I've seen that error made in all the games we've done. Oh, well. But no, it's second down and nine. Can't replay the official's error. Tommy Davidson, number 19, the number one pass catcher, the senior captain of the Baylor Bears, caught it. Glenn Blackwood made the stop. Here is this from the end zone. Davison curled inside, the wing back went in the flat. The timing had to be absolutely perfect, and it was. Tommy Davidson, the leading receiver for Baylor. All right, now, Davidson coming to the near side again. Taylor in the slot, number five, on a first and ten from their own 21. Taylor's second possession. Ooh, number 42, blasting through there. Mark Martinone. From Kennedy, Texas, the sophomore. Ooh, that was an early ending to a play. He scraped off outside the defensive end and had no one to block him, and uh, he had a clear shot at the quarterback, Greg Wood. The defensive front of Texas controlled the line of scrimmage and have all year, Chris, and it lets the linebackers just roam up and down the line and make the tackle. All right. A loss of three yards, second down and 13, no score. Now from their 18. Taylor's first possession, they fumbled it at the 40 after driving from their own 22, and Texas recovered, but Texas did nothing on three snaps, so they punted it away, and now the second possession. White Jefferson, number 80, and ABC is still the one. Okay. Well, that looked like the Texas defense that we've seen all year, Chris. Uh, I believe they came out a little bit lethargic, and now they're fired up, it looks like, and uh, really are charging and attacking. Aerial shot, Billy Sullivan's camera, ABC camera in the Goodyear blimp. Third down and 12 for Baylor. No score in the game. Seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. Wood and Baylor. The hop on. There you see the ingredients that make a great defense. The pursuit of seemingly everyone, Frank. It was a screen pass, and they had two men rushing. They read the mail of Baylor's offensive linemen. They did not hold their blocks long enough. You can see the Texas linebackers pursuing out uh, Copeland, number 38, who is a recipient of a Hall of Fame scholarship graduate award. An outstanding student, number 38, Morgan Copeland. All right. Now, from the 13, we have Luke Prestridge, who is averaging 43 yards a punt. Baylor's first punt, Johnny Johnston, is deep, and he can run him back. Going to catch it at midfield. And Johnny nearly broke away, but he has great field position for the number one team in the country, Texas, at the Baylor 40. There you get an idea of the sprawling campus of 
the Texas here in Austin. Will the insurance fix our chimney? Sure, after we plow through the paperwork. It's different with Allstate. What's different? We have the world's largest team of claim specialists. Don't worry about a thing. They settle most claims like this without estimates. No problem. Allstate specialists are interested in you, not paperwork. I'll call the contractor today. Oh. That was easy. When it takes being different to be better, Allstate will do it. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. This is the first school that encourages copying. The Xerox International Training Center in Leesburg, Virginia, where each year Xerox sends more than 12,000 sales and service representatives. Here they learn the latest advances we've made in our business and the best ways to apply them to your business. You see, one of the reasons Xerox equipment does so well in your office is because Xerox people do so well at school. Thanksgiving Day, ABC Sports presents outstanding NCAA college football action as the seventh-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks take on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech in a classic Southwest Conference showdown. That's NCAA college football Thanksgiving Day on ABC. We're back in Austin, Texas, following a Baylor punt. The Longhorns have it first and ten at the Baylor 40. There's no score, surprisingly, with 6.35 remaining in the first quarter. We have a first quarter score. Washington leads Washington State 14 to nothing. More on that later. And carrying the ball was number seven, the freshman quarterback from Cypress, Texas, Sammy Ansley, and Ron Burns, 42 of Grand Prairie, along with Ron Eichenberg of Houston, made the stop. Eichenberg is the son of a former Rice quarterback, Virgil Eichenberg, and Ron Burns is one of the greatest high school players we've had in the tech state of Texas in a long time. Michigan having defeated Ohio State today 14-6. The Washington Huskies trying to get into the Rose Bowl against them. Johnny Ham Jones, number 25, carried on a second down and six. Tom Brown made the first hit at approximately the 32, so it's going to be a third down and four. And Mike Singletary, a linebacker freshman from Houston, number 63, was also in on the play. He was voted the outstanding defensive play in our conference last week against Rice with 13 tackles and one interception. Voice of Frank Broyles for two decades, like Daryl Royal, coaching Frank's case, Arkansas, Daryl, Texas. Then they retired a year ago. Change jobs, Chris. <laughs> right. On a third and four. And that freshman quarterback from Jackson, Mississippi, or correction, from Cypress, Texas, he doesn't hesitate to move with that ball, and it's a first and ten, the initial one for the number one team in the nation with only five minutes left in the first quarter. That play was made possible because Earl Campbell faked and put the strong safety on the ground with a block five yards downfield to spring Hansley for more yardage. That was a 12-yard play from the 20 now, Baylor, first and 10, Texas. No score. Hansley. There's Johnny Ham Jones, number 25. So I work up ahead of steam. But then he was stopped by Tony Green, forcing him out of bounds. But the, the gain is to the 14. A gain of six. There's a better look at Ham. He's the right half of the back. Coming into the game, he's averaged 5.4 yards a carry. He's a junior from Hamlin. Mainly, he's a great blocker that has helped Earl Campbell amass nearly 1,400 yards in this single season alone. So it's a second down and four now. No score. Texas with the ball at the 14 of Baylor. And Earl Campbell, thus far in a couple of plays, just hasn't gotten on track because Scooter Reed, number 18, was there to meet him right at, after a yard game. And uh, Baylor's secondary will support as fast as any in the country. They have a lot of confidence in those four young men, Fields, Green, Reed, and Ronald Burns. And now a new burnt orange jersey for number 20 as we watch what happened. Lockett did not block their cornerback, uh, Reed, and he tackled uh, Campbell head up. 
but no gain. Wide receiver missed his block. From the Goodyear Blimp, you see the crowd in this vast Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. Will be more football action with 4.09 remaining in the first quarter after this. <laughs> Hi ho, your Admiral Admiral here. I, I I don't always watch cartoons. Carried away with your new Admiral television? Well, uh, kinda. <laughs> yeah. Now look at that great color. Just one button controls all the reds, greens, and blues automatically. Oh. <laughs> Funny little rascal. <laughs> May I join you? Oh, please do. Thank you. Don't just get a television. Get an Admiral. Quality from Rockwell International. Hey, this is Bob on the road for Texaco Hope. And I'm going to show you one of the toughest holes in the world. Number two here, Texaco Santa Maria oil field in California. Once all we could get out of this well was five barrels a day. Today, we're getting 80. You see, by injecting steam into oil wells, we can heat the oil and get more out than we could before. It's expensive, but it can help us become less dependent on foreign oil. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. These are the folks that cheer on the number one team in the country, the Texas Longhorns, who with 4.09 remaining in the first quarter, have yet to score, averaging 38 points a game. This is part of the band. They'll be snapping it now, third down and three. On Monday night, 9 Eastern, it'll be the Washington Redskins against the Green Bay Packers right here on ABC. Lamb Jones to the near side of the field, third and three. And that was Ham Jones, number 25, getting near the five as Ron Burns tripped him up. They needed three yards, so they have a first and goal to go, Darrell Royal. Chris, uh, Texas has scored on 44% of their possessions. This is their second possession, and I get called Darrell a long time. <laughs> I get mail often to Darrell Broyles and Frank Royal. So well, Darrell and I used to it, Chris. That's all right, because uh, Arif Arsigian once called me Keith, ah, so I know how you feel. Uh, I'm sorry. But I'll it, tell you one thing. Uh, it's a compliment. It's a toss-up to know which friend <laughs> I like better, you or Daryl. Well, uh, you're mighty nice, Chris. All right, now first and goal from the seven. And an interception by the Baylor Bears. Howard Fields of Colleen, Texas. And now the drive by the Longhorns. Whoops, hold it. Just seen a nullification by the referee, Percy Penn. Ansley trying to hit Alfred Jackson. And apparently uh, it was a trap ball. That's all I could think of. Evidently, he didn't have possession. He caught it about knee high. And when he fell, it rolled on the ground. And the official said he did not have possession. Luck for Texas. And of, and, of course, the umpire, Zeke Martin of Denton, Texas, was right there to see it. So it's a second and goal now for the Longhorns. And the Baylor defense denying Sammy Ansley. He may have gotten a yard or two on the play. It was a second down play just inside the five. So it's going to be third and goal as Thomas Earl Young made the stop. They're... Uh, the Longhorns are moving with the sun directly behind them. You can see the brightness of the white jerseys. Well, that's the brightness of a beautiful face. The white jerseys of Baylor are really spotlighted by this bright sun. So let's see what the Longhorns do on a third down and goal. With 2.47 remaining in the first quarter, there is no score. Lockett, 47 to the near side of the field. A marker down, too much time. In college football, 25 seconds to snap it. Texas uh, couldn't get their signal straight. Jackson land, lined up on the left and had run across to the right. He didn't get up on the line of scrimmage, Chris. Had they snapped the ball, it would have been a five-yard penalty anyway because he didn't have seven linemen on the line of scrimmage. So the down will be replayed. These are the Baylor cheerleaders. And we're happy here in Austin, Texas, to welcome the viewers of the Washington-Washington State game. And you'll be surprised to know that with 2.37 remaining in the first quarter of play, the number one team in the country, Texas, have yet to score. It's a scoreless deadlock here. Baylor on the left in the white with the gold helmets and a green trim. And now we look at first-year head coach here at Texas, Fred Akers and his staff. He's a 39-year-old graduate of Arkansas. And 
He's done a great job this year. Next week, a big lineup of NCAA college football here on ABC. Arkansas versus Texas Tech. That's right. That's on uh, Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Then Friday at 2 Eastern, Nebraska versus Oklahoma. That's at 2 Eastern. And then at 9 Eastern time, we'll be at UCLA as USC will try to stop them from going into the Rose Bowl against the victorious Michigan Wolverines, who won today over Ohio State 14-6. That's just the beginning of the week. We'll tell you more later. So, Frank, we have lots of NCAA college football coming up next week. The Thanksgiving weekend traditionally has been one of the most exciting weekends ever in college football. We're looking forward to being a part of it. All right. It's third down, as we said, just inside the 10. Third down conversions. Texas, two of three. And there you see the lineman coming up. 73 was Rick Ingram of Austin, Texas. And now, Sammy Ansley calling signals. A big play. Campbell and Jones are the setbacks. Touchdown, Alfred Jackson of Caldwell, a senior. What a leap into the end zone. What a razzle-dazzle play. He has been a sensational football player for four years. He has 9-4 and 9-5 speed. A real threat running, and Chris, one of the things that impressed me in college football all of this year is the success the teams have had with the reverse plays to the wideouts. They have worked in practically every ball game that we've seen them try. That was a perfect example. And now trying for the point after touchdown, Steve McMichael. His kick is up. He's filling in for the injured Russell Erksleben, and he is successful. 2.31 to go in the first quarter. A drive of 40 yards, and on the ninth play, it was Alfred Jackson scoring. So it is seven to nothing. And this week, we mentioned Thursday and Friday football games. This Saturday, at 12.30 Eastern, two classic rivalries, Penn State versus Pittsburgh, followed at four by the Army-Navy game from Philadelphia. All those games on ABC. And you see the extended index finger and the little finger of all of these Texas fans. It means hook em horns with their Texas Longhorn symbol. Now the hook em horns signal does not mean, Frank, that they're number two. They're number one, and I mean they're number one. So they now lead seven to nothing. 231 as we look at Kelly, the two-year-old brown bear, the Baylor mascot. McMichael's kick is going deep, looking into the sun is Hawthorne. And he lets it go through the end zone. So it'll be a touchback coming out to the 20. Baylor moving it. Now, this will be their third possession. They had a nice drive going on their first possession, for those of you that just joined us, but then fumbled at the 40. Texas took over and had the punt. Then they had an interception. And then Texas took over, and they uh, drove from the 40. And in the ninth play, Alfred Jackson scored with a point after 7 to nothing. And now, let's see what Baylor can do from the 20. Quarterback is Greg Wood, number nine. The lineman blocking up front, trying to uh, find an opening against the Texas defense. And we're still looking for the ball carrier. Gary Blair. Okay. Gary Blair, number 44 of Mesquite, a senior, carried on the play, and he moved the ball. It was a very successful play out to the 25. Glenn Blackwood on the tackle, where now it'll be second down and five. Texas leading seven to nothing, coming up to the two-minute mark of the first quarter. Robert Bo Taylor, number five, set away. Wood going behind number 82, Ronnie Lee of Tyler. As uh, we indicated early, the cousin of this man, Heisman Trophy candidate number 20, Earl Campbell. Earl has had 19 100-yard games or more. 14 touchdowns this year. He's from Tyler, 6'1", 220 pounds. And I remember doing Pittsburgh, Penn State last year, Frank, and in the first half, Tony Dorsett, as he was called then, did nothing in the first half, but did he come alive in the second, and he won the Heisman Trophy. All right. Third down play. The target, Bo Taylor. He apparently was out of bounds when he caught it, so it's going to be... Uh, fourth down coming up for 
number nine, Greg Wood of Jackson, Mississippi. There's the capital that was made possible in the late 1800s by the sale of three million acres of land here in the state of Texas. This is Austin, now 300,000 inhabitants. It's a cultural city, of course, with the university. And this is a huge stadium. It's been uh, revised several times, but right now it's just perfect for the game of football. So with 1.44 to go, number 14, Luke Prestridge will kick for the second time. 27, Johnny Johnson for Texas, deep. Johnny Johnson leads the nation in punt return. Oh, he's great. Here he comes from the 25. 30. Good kick coverage by the Baylor Bears as they make the stop at approximately the 32. So members of the Texas Longhorn Band and there's what they call the super drum because the band has a drum called the Big Bertha, which you'll see at halftime. This is one of the magnificent structures because of its versatility. $29 million inside Abe Lemon's Longhorn basketball team will play. There'll be concerts. It's the most fantastic interior lighting and PA system that we've ever seen and heard. The Southwest Conference is coming up in basketball, Chris. Like your Arkansas team, right? Yes. Now for the 32, first down. stuttered through the block and this man we were just talking about how he had been very lethargic and that's what happens the great players will all of a sudden explode and he went 43 yards like this Chris it was the first time they've lined up in the eye formation the eye formation is a kind of like a change of pace and delayed plays this was a misdirection Campbell got the ball deep in the backfield got a great block from Jim Yarber the guard pulling out as a lead blocker now from the Baylor 25 after that great run by Earl Campbell. And look, they give it right back to him, and there he goes! Well, this is when the picture tells the story. Four carries, 66 yards, his 15th touchdown in the year. And if he doesn't win the Heisman Trophy, it'll be the biggest upset in a long time. Chris, for those of us that know Earl Campbell, fully appreciate the type of person he is, as well as a football player. He was well aware of what the, this game would mean to his chances for the Heisman Trophy, but he's a team player. He's more interested in the rank, rankings of his football team and the victory in the Cotton Bowl and, and the conference championship. They're going to have to have a lot of jerseys for him. He's going to his third now. That kick was blocked by McGeary of uh, Denver City, Max McGeary. But this run made the <laughs> six points. He just ricochets through and then turns it on, accelerates when he gets in the secondary. There he is, the third jersey now, the burnt orange. And we must remember the score is 13 to nothing, not 14. Wow, we from the 32, two plays, both by Earl Campbell, touchdown. This puts them ahead of their percentage uh, of uh, touchdowns on possessions, two out of three. By the way, Jim Yarbrough of Galveston made a key block, so a salute to him. He was pulling around, leading the play, and knocked the cornerback out. McMichael, and again Hawthorne. McMichael, he has, boy, does he have that power in that leg. And there is the tower, 27 stories. Now, if Texas can win tonight, that tower will be bathed in orange, indicating a football victory. When Texas beat us, Chris, we always like to get out of town in the airplane before they turn it on. Oh, uh, yes, it's like your our pal, Darrell Royal, 166 uh, victories. So imagine, he caused the lights to be turned on that number of times. And, of course, your record at Arkansas, they turned on the red there for you many, many times. So from the 20, Greg Wood handed off to Frank Pollard, the sophomore from another native of Texas. Tim Campbell making the stop. And there was a half-yard game, but we'll call it second down and nine. And we have 39 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And we said that not much was happening here in the game. And all of a sudden, we get two quick touchdowns. 
Here's Brad Sharon, number 77, charging into Ron Kramer, the offensive guard, one of Baylor's best. Uses his hands and uh, releases from the block and makes the play. On the last play, we're sorry to say, number 82, Ronnie Lee, was shaken up. He's that fine junior from Tyler, Texas. He's the cousin of Earl Campbell, but on the opposite side. He's, there you see him at the top of your screen now. He was, they tried to help him, and then he just said, I'm okay. Jerry Stockton, 87, takes his place now with a second and nine from their own 21. 34 seconds to go, first quarter. Texas is in the lead, 13 to nothing. And this is sophomore Greg Wood. And that's Frank Pollard. Pollard. Pollard getting good yardage. About two yards short of the forward stake for the first down. Morgan Copeland and Johnny Johnson on the stop at the 26-yard line. So it's going to be a third down and four. And there's a look at Lee, who was shaken up. We hope he'll be okay. Texas defense has only allowed one touchdown rushing in 374 plays. So now with a third down and four from the 26, the first quarter has ended. They'll change sides on the field. Another 15-minute second quarter coming up. And as we look at Memorial Stadium, Texas, with two touchdowns, one by Jackson and one by Campbell, the block kick, and it's 13 to nothing. Trains and trucks are rolling across this land and back. Trains and trucks are moving where the highway meets the track. And here they are in Lionel's brand new trains and trucking sets for your kids. Everything here is included. Cranes at work, cargo, track, buildings, big trucks and big trains for small hands to play with. It's Lionel's trains and trucking where the highway meets the track. The tire designed to handle all weather conditions. Tiempo, a breakthrough in steel belted radios. We took the Tiempo to the rainforest of Chile to show how its open, aggressive tread pulls in wet and mud. Then up torturous mining roads to the snow in the highlands and finish with a smooth, quiet ride. Tiempo with a protective sidewall scuff bar from $39. Keep it on season after season, only from Goodyear. Last spring, 227 specially equipped Chevy Nova police cars were delivered to the Jacksonville, Florida Sheriff's Department. Now, that's a tall order, but no surprise, because law enforcement agencies in 47 states have made Chevy Nova America's best-selling police compact. Now, a lot of the things the police look for in a new car are the same things you'd look for in a new car. Reliability, performance, and value. Chevy Nova, a wanted car, now more than ever. Of all the buildings on this vast campus, none is more visited than the one in the center. The Lyndon B. Johnson Library, here on the University of Texas. On a third down and four, the visiting Baylor Bears, Gary Blair carrying on the play. They needed four, and that was the first snap of the second quarter with Texas leading 13 to nothing and Johnny Johnston, number 27 of the Longhorns, making the stop. And at the... Out to about the 32. Enough for the first down. And Frank, here are the first quarter stats. Of course, Texas has only made four first downs to Baylor's four, but look at the difference in yardage. 110 to 52. Interference called, and you saw it. Number 87, Ronnie Lee's replacement, Jerry Stockton, was covered much too closely by Ricky Churchman, who earlier in the game... Uh, covered a player very closely but got away with it. Churchman plays on the side of the tight end. They try to keep uh, him from having to cover a wide receiver because Texas will use predominantly a man-for-man -man pass defense and this is different than colleges. Here you can see the throw back to the tight end and Churchman was a little bit anxious and came over the shoulder before the ball arrived to uh, Stockton. So the ball now is between the 42 and the 43 with the first and 10, 14-30. Remaining in the first half, Texas leading 13 to nothing as we look at sophomore Greg Wood. Deflected and intercepted. Copeland inter uh, deflected it, and then Blackwood, number 37, caught the ball, and it's the second turnover. Lost by the Baylor Bears, and the Longhorns, number one in the country, are happy. 
They were throwing just a curl pass because the receiver was a single covered, but Copeland jumped high in the air, deflected the ball, and the old tip drill came in the bin as Blackwood. And by the way, I coached his daddy at Baylor, and his younger bro his older brother is playing for Baltimore. That's right, Frank. You were at Baylor three years with Bob Woodruff, right? My first coaching job. All right. It was great to see that young man say hello to you yesterday, Frank, with a great deal of respect. Now Texas from the 48, first down. And Ham Jones shows his speed, 5'9", 184. Ingram throwing the block on the left side of the line, and they went from the 48 to the Baylor, 38. There, Colgate, that undefeated team, Frank, Delaware, Beat them 21 to 3. Debbie Raymond has won a lot of key football games after he took Dave Nelson's place as the head coach. That's too bad for Colgate. That's disappointing in a way. Mike Lockett 47 and Jackson set to the near side of the line for Texas. First and 10 from the Baylor 38. And being stopped, Earl Campbell of Tyler, who has one touchdown, who's carried the ball five times. And let's see what yardage he gained there. He got three yards to the 35. He needs one more yard to miss the one-season rushing mark of Roosevelt Leakes, and they still have a game to play. Do you think Darrell hadn't had some fullbacks here? Steve Worcester, Roosevelt Leakes, and now Earl Campbell. Darrell Raw with three national championships here at Texas. Fred Akers, the coach now, his first year undefeated number one in the country. Second and seven. Well, Sammy uh, Ansley attempted to get that ball out to uh, number two, Jackson. There we get a look at number seven. Remember, he's a freshman from Cypress, Texas. 6'2", 175 pounds. He's 0 for 3 forward passing. He's 5 of 13 coming into this game with two touchdown passes. Good runner, as you saw earlier in the ball game. So it'll be a third down and seven coming up. Tipping the ball for Baylor was Lester Ward of Temple, Texas. Third and seven now. For the Longhorns who lead 13 to nothing here in the second quarter. My hell. That was a wild play. The wildest I've seen. Thanks to a tearaway jersey. Those tearaway jerseys, Chris, cost about $8 a piece, but it was worth it on that, I thought, until he threw for the near interception. It bounced right off of a Baylor back shoulder pass. And the ripper was Thomas Brown, number 90 of Galveston, Texas. Young man that I spent many hours in his home trying to recruit him for Arkansas. One of the few you lost. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Chris. <laughs> okay, well. He was a good one, and he's playing outstanding ball for Baylor. Well. Imagine this, Texas needing to punt. Ted Constasna, Constanza, rather, is back to punt. Frank has a story on him, which he'll give you the first opportunity. He's uh, going for that sideline, and... Well, the official says it was out of bounds beyond the goal line, so it'll... Uh, be spotted out here at the 20 after going 35 yards. Let's go away for a commercial. Are you still chained to? Gotcha. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor lets you walk away free from nicks and cuts. Its 36 surgical steel rotary razor blades are safely protected inside three floating heads to give you a comfortable shave that's razor close, razor smooth for up to three weeks on a single charge. The rechargeable Norelco Rotary Razor. It lets you walk away from... Gotcha! Like your GM car? Yeah! Want to keep that great GM feeling? We sure do! Then shake hands with Mr. Goodwrench. He's dedicated to improved customer care at more than 6,000 participating GM dealers. You want genuine GM parts. You want your car fixed right, on time. That's what I want, too. Caring about your GM car helps keep me in business. Keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Southwest Conference football teams posted an 18-9 non-conference record this season. That's the best of any major collegiate conference. 
It marked the SWC's 56th winning non-conference season in 63 years of competition and its sixth consecutive winning record. That breed, the Longhorn, had much to do with the opening and the success of the West. He is Bevo number 10 in his second year as the mascot for the Texas Longhorns, ranked number one. The Hook'em Horns, Index Finger, and Little Finger coming from the Longhorn, of course. All right, first and 10 following the punt. Texas leading 13 to nothing, 12.54 remaining in the first half. Wood, the Baylor quarterback, giving the Hawthorne for two or three yards and a lot of contact down on the field, and Frank Burrells pointed that out uh, before the opening kickoff that Baylor and the Longhorns are very physical. Let's look at some scores, Frank, uh, around the country. We preceded with a 14-6 victory by Michigan over Ohio State today. Syracuse has improved their record this year with a victory over West Virginia. Rutgers is strong again, defeating Boston College, Boston University. On a second down and six, number 31 having trouble with the handle on the ball. And recovering it, that was Seaburn who lost it. Recovering it was Blackwood. Mm. So Blackwood now has been in on two turnovers for the Longhorns today. And Baylor has been leading the Southwest Conference uh, in the fewest number of turnovers, nine uh, fumbles, I should say. But when you pitch back to the, ta to the trail back, he's got to have complete concentration. Otherwise, he'll go through his hands like that. The band of Texas, and of course, a great team, makes the opportunities. So now let's see what the Longhorns can do with the ball at the 23, first and 10, leading 13 to nothing, 12-15 to go in the first half. Ansley, and here's their man getting the blocks, and a beautiful block thrown by Han Jones. We indicated earlier that he has sprung Campbell loose so often, but Ham took a hot lick, and he's down on one knee at the 20, tying his shoe now as we look at Earl Campbell, the great Earl Campbell. So it's another first down, and the line of scrimmage will be the 11. There's Ham getting up, going back into the huddle. An ABC News special tonight, the visit of President Sadat to Israel. Harry Reisner being the host, and Barbara Walters interviewing President Sadat of Egypt and the Prime Minister of Israel as well. That's at 7 to 7.30 Eastern Pacific, 6 to 6.30 Central. And I saw their earlier ABC News special, and it was terrific. First and 10 now from the 11, and it's Ham Jones who threw that block that gets to carry the ball. Chris, that was an unusual play. They made some yards on it early, and I haven't seen that this year. It was a misdirection to the fullback, lined up in the eye formation, run into the split end, which is somewhat a hit or miss type play. Well, Texas losing two yards on the play. It is second down and 12. For those of you that joined us, our West Coast viewers, it's second and 12 for Texas, leading 13 to nothing. And there's the man of the hour and of the season, and perhaps the Heisman Trophy man. That is Earl Campbell, who scored one touchdown today at 73 yards before that run, or prior to a previous run, as Ingram sprung him again. It is a first and goal, and you're looking at a man who has carried the ball only seven times today. He has 97 yards. And most of it out of the high formation. I think it's significant that last year's national champion team combined the veer and the high formation. Texas is number one, and they're combining the the eye and the veer formation, which is kind of a like a pitcher having a good curveball and a good fastball, Chris. It's a delayed offense as compared to a quick hitting offense. All right, Shorty Lawson, the linesman, and his crew, Shorty from Abilene, Texas, has come out to measure, and uh, we were right. It is a first down, first and goal. Washington State just kicked a field goal for our West Coast audience and missed. But here we've had a touchdown by Alfred Jackson. We've had a touchdown by Earl Campbell. The second point after try was blocked, so it's 13 to nothing, 11-02, remaining in the first half. At Washington, it's 21 to nothing. The Huskies leading, and only they can do and wait and watch our telecast on Friday night to see if UCLA can defeat SC. Oh, that was a power drive into the line on a first and goal, and it was Earl Campbell, who last year sat on the bench four games because of injuries, but 
this year he's um, been pretty durable. He's been healthy. Last year, Chris, he, even though he played, he wasn't at full speed. Now, he was hit hard by Jerry Harrison of Baylor. He's from Caldwell, a junior, 5'9 only, and 201 pounds. So, it's a second and goal from the one for Texas. And undefeated Texas failed to get in. Ansley of Cypress, Texas, quarterback. One of the four that Fred Akers has used this year was stopped by Tom Brown and Dennis Jural of Houston. There's Campbell, 20. 47 is Lockett as we look at other scores. Holy Cross, 14 over Connecticut, 3. Maryland finishing strong against Virginia. Jerry Clayman ended up with a good year. Virginia Tech over Wake Forest. All right, number 47, Lockett, splitting at the top left of your screen. Third and goal. Touchdown, Sammy Ansley. Little freshman. 19 to nothing is the score here at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. It is 19 to nothing. And let's go back to the West Coast, Washington, Washington State, Al Michaels and Lee Grosko. And of course, we're going to stay right here where the number one team, Texas, has scored three times. It was um, a drought most of the first quarter, and then, lo and behold, the Longhorns came alive and scored two quick touchdowns, and uh, it was 13 to nothing as they failed on the point after, and now, with a 19 to nothing, they're going for two. Incomplete. Unsuccessful, so the score remains 19 to nothing. It was Ansley intended for Olympic gold medal winner for uh, 40 relay, Lamb Jones. There's Ansley, and as Frank Broyles said a moment ago, that freshman from Cypress, Texas. The entire game has been played uh, on Baylor's end of the field, and the turnovers have hurt them. We're going to leave the capital city of Texas, Austin. Schlitz Light. Schlitz Light Beer has a third fewer calories than our other fine beer, and all the taste beer drinkers expect from Schlitz. Is that what that guy always drinks? That's his beer. It's the only light beer with gusto. I'll have a Schlitz Light. Make it two. Beer drinkers know it took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. Simmons gets a Dear John letter from his girl. So he takes it out on the Major's car. Starts by breaking three spark plugs. Do I give him extra duty? No. I give him Autolite spark plugs. Autolite insulators are 50% stronger than the best-selling plug. Even if you put the wrench on wrong, they're less likely to crack and make your car run bad. Even Simmons can't break them. But heaven knows, he tries. Autolite and Fram are Bendix companies. Thanksgiving Day, ABC Sports presents outstanding NCAA college football action as the seventh-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks take on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech in a classic Southwest Conference showdown. That's NCAA College Football Thanksgiving Day on ABC. That's Pam McGee, the Texas cheerleader with the hook of horn signs and the future cheerleader. We don't know her name, but Frank Broyles, isn't she adorable? She is that. Now, deep awaiting McMichael's kick is Greg Hawthorne. Texas leading 19 to nothing. They failed on a point after and a try for two. A short kick is taken by Frank Pollard, number 30. And Baylor, a fair field position out at about their 35, where they have the first and 10. Texas now has 146 total yards. Campbell has 98 yards, or 67% of the rushing. He is some football player. He can run inside or outside, and when he can't, uh, have, doesn't have him blocking, he'll run over you. And give me that one word that describes him that you use, Frank. A ricochet. The franchise. Oh, he's a franchise. Yeah. Comes along once in a coach's lifetime. Player like that. From the 35, it was Seaburn carrying on the play. Yeah. We have isolated on uh, number 77, Brad Shearer, an All-American. Brad uh, is having a great year. He's playing right over the offensive guard, and it was a trap play, but he wasn't fooled. The pulling guard, Sledge, had no chance to block him. 
Thus far, Texas is no yards passing. Thus far, they haven't needed it. Second and ten here for, for Baylor from the 35. We have eight minutes and 51 seconds. And a beautiful run and a try to lateral by Greg Wood to Hawthorne. Well, that's a heads-up play by sophomore Greg Wood. And uh, we'll have to move back now to the huddle, the Baylor huddle. Coming up at halftime, don't forget we'll have a fireman's fun flashback featuring a look at highlights from today's Michigan Wolverine victory over Ohio State, 14 to 6. Plus, music of the Golden Wave Band of Baylor and the show band of the Southwest, the Texas Band. Now it's a first and ten after that razzle-dazzle play from the 49. Wood. Many times deflected. Intended for number five, Bo Taylor. It'll be second and ten now. With 8.40 remaining in the first half, Texas 19, Baylor nothing. For the Bears of Waco, they have completed three of eight for 17 yards. Number you know, the facilities here, Frank, like <laughs> yours at Arkansas, are tremendous. And there's one of the greatest college baseball stadiums I've ever seen. I told Darren you'd have to go to Montreal to see better facilities. <laughs> All right. Here's Wood. Second and ten. First ball. Intercepted in midair. Brad Shear hit him. And then uh, Ricky Churchman. If it is Ricky Churchman that pulled it down, that's his third turnover. Shear was the man that knocked it loose, and it was either Churchman or Derek Hatchett. Watch Shear control the offensive blocker. They were trying to double team him with a tackle blocking him also. Thompson Jones, I'm sorry, but he pursues down the line, and when Wood turns up, there's Mr. Shear. And Johnny on the spot, Ricky Churchman. Three recoveries for Churchman, Texas at their own 49. First down, leading 19 to nothing. The deep man, Earl Campbell. Earl Campbell getting to the 45 of Baylor. Back there blocking for him was number 25 again, Ham Jones. Mike Singletary on the tackle. So the gain on the play for Mr. Campbell, we'll call it six yards. So that's second down and four, and he's the number one rusher in a season in Texas history. And that sweep was just made for him. He keys the tight ends block, Chris. Tight end tries to hook the defensive end. If he can't, he blocks him out, and Earl will cut inside just like he did on that play. Now from the 45 of Baylor, second down and four. Texas leading 19 to nothing. 7.52 to go first half. Driving for the first down was Campbell. Number 90 is Thomas Brown and White. 99 is Alan Stone for the Baylor Bears. They look to the far sideline to see where that forward point of the ball is. It's extremely close. Referee here today, Percy Penn, a school administrator from Dallas. Zeke Martin, the umpire from Denton, a wholesale gas and oil man. A linesman, Shorty Lawson from Abilene, athletic director of the Abilene Industrial School District. Time has been called by the Baylor Bears as Sammy Ansley comes over to his coach, Freddie Akers, here with his team leading 19 to nothing, 7.24 to go. There's the Goodyear blimp shot high above Memorial Stadium here in Texas. We'll be back. See what's new today. Stare hard at this new Chevrolet Caprice Coupe and you'll see something most unusual. Full-size grown-up human beings riding comfortably in the back seat with ample leg room. And in the trunk, almost 20 cubic feet of luggage space. The new Chevrolet Caprice Coupe with more trunk room, more headroom, and more rear seat leg room. It's as easy on the knees as it is on the eyyes. Johnny's on television. Oh, that's true. Three on square. That's true. There. It's just beautifully red, white, and you'll see it clear because Quasar makes television special again. Our new shorter Dynabrite tube makes a smaller dot for Quasar's sharpest, clearest picture yet. You'll see more. He needs the haircut. He does. And before, because Quasar makes television special again. A happy Texas cheerleader. And at the top of the show, we said they had two reasons why. One is that the team is number one. And also, they have the number one uh, candidate for the Heisman Trophy and Earl Campbell. And 
Frank Broyles, he's carried 10 times, 107 yards, a 10.7 average. His 20th game of over 100 yards, and the one quarterback who scored one of the three Texas touchdowns, Ansley, carried on a second and four. Ron Burns hit him hard. Earl Campbell again threw the key block on the linebacker on the down the line option. Turn quarterback turned up and Campbell threw the block on the linebacker. So it's a first down for the Texas Longhorns. Line of scrimmage is approximately the 36 for the Longhorns. Lock at 47 is in the backfield. He's to the near side. Here is Campbell. Jones blocking. Good for a couple of yards. They'll come outside on those sweeps, and it's a thing of beauty to watch them unfold. We have seen Campbell just go wild at the end of the first quarter. Now we have 6.31 remaining in the first half, 19 to nothing. Campbell 11 carries, 109 yards. This way he'll be well over 200. He gained one yard, so it's second down and nine from the 35. Lockett and Jackson, potential receivers in a non-passing first half for the Longhorns. And that's Ham Jones. Ham Jones and returning the favor. Helping a little bit. Was another Jones and uh, Jackson on the block. There you get a look at Johnny Ham Jones from Hamlin, Texas. Rick Ingram was pulling and leading the play, and he made the key block on the cornerback. Texas line has been improving, according to Coach Akers, every week. You can see it today. They're getting good movement on practically every play against the Baylor defense. So now the Steers against the Bears have a first and 10 at the Bear 23. About six minutes remaining in the first half. Campbell, Jones blocking. And uh, a good penetration by number 41 first, who really got into the backfield. And that is Ron Eichenberg. And then Scooter Reed forced Earl Campbell out of bounds. There's the Goodyear Blimp America based in Houston. And the captain is Joel Chamberlain, Norwood, Massachusetts, and our ABC cameraman, Billy Sullivan, who's from the Upper East Side of New York. It's a long way from that spot. Now zeroing in on the 27-story tall University of Texas Tower. So we have a second down at 7. 5.58 to go. First half, Texas 19, Baylor nothing. Texas about a 20-point favorite. And rarely now, Ansley tries to throw. A very fine, sure tackle by number 49 of the Baylor Bears. That is Lester Ward, a freshman from Temple, Texas. So it's going to bring up a third down, and with the line of scrimmage back at the 28, it'll be a third down and seven. Yes, it's a bright day here in Austin, Texas. Most unusual for this time of year. Here on the middle of November, and the weather 80 degrees. That's the center rolling the ball over Wes Herb Hubert of Houston, number 58. Third and seven for the Longhorns. And they did manage to stop Earl Campbell. Howard Fields got at his shoe top, number 29, helped by Lester Ward. And uh, there you get a look at Campbell, 221 pounds. He shed some weight uh, between last year and this season. It's helped him a great deal. The coaching staff told him, uh, Chris, on the, their first day in Austin to lose 20 pounds and uh, he would be a candidate for the Heisman Trophy, and he went out and did it, and it looks like they are profits. So we're going to have a field goal try by Steve McMichael, the defensive tackle, filling in for the injured Russell Erksleben. 44-yard attempt. It's high. It's short and no good. All right, coming up on the big holiday weekend, starting on Thursday at 2.30 Eastern, Arkansas versus Texas Tech. Then Friday at 2 Eastern, Nebraska versus Oklahoma. Then at night, Frank Royals and I will be at Los Angeles Coliseum for a 
big, important battle for the UCLA Bruins versus the Southern California Trojans. That's at 9 Eastern time. Then moving on to Saturday, a doubleheader. Penn State versus Pittsburgh, followed by Army against Navy. All right, following the missed field goal. For the Baylor Bears, it's a first and ten at their own 20. Wood handing off to Blair. Lance Taylor, number 32, and there's one of our cranes. Someone has put a Texas number one sign on it, and that is the situation. They have been for four weeks, number one in the nation. Well, I hope that's hello and not goodbye. <laughs> Second down and ten now for the Baylor Bears. Four and five on this season. And they've got a tough sophomore quarterback. Martin Noni stops Greg Wood. And we have a penalty flag on the artificial turf here in Austin, Texas. Let's see what it'll be. They often say about Austin, Texas here on a great bend on both sides of the Colorado River that they come, they see, and they stay. Has a lot to offer. In the fourth quarter, Mississippi State leading Mississippi 18 to 14. That's an upset. Utah 30, 29, Florida 38. Big win for Doug Dickey. Michigan State continuing to come back this year with a fine season, over, victory over Iowa. Indiana over Purdue. Another big infrastate win. Northwestern over Illinois. How about that one, Chris? The previous one shocked me more. Indiana over Purdue. Minnesota over Wisconsin. Central Michigan over Western Michigan. We've had a clipping penalty, Frank, here against Baylor, so it's going to be third down and 22 as Wood tries to get out of that sticky territory. As Blair carried the ball finally and then went out of bounds. So with a fourth down coming up, fourth down about 20, after Ricky Churchman forced Blair out of bounds, a Baylor punt coming up. And now the left end of Memorial Stadium here in Austin uh, is not covered by sun because here in Austin uh, it's getting along in the afternoon about 4.20. Luke Prestwich to punt. Oh, does he uncork one? If that stays in bounds. Holy mackerel. 79 yards. Well, he had a following wind at 14 miles an hour. But watch it again. He got a bad snap, and they didn't think he could kick it, so he ran to the left a little bit, had a little room because Texas had uh, rolled back for the punt return. He punts it 79 yards. Chris, one of the funniest plays I've ever seen in football is that happened, and the Texas team, or uh, the counterpart, led the kicker for a touchdown. They thought he was going to kick it. He never saw that he didn't. So Texas now has the ball, the touchback coming out to the 20. They lead 19 to nothing with 325 remaining in the first half. Both bands at halftime, a view of the 40 acres, the University of Texas campus, 42,000 students here. Last time these two teams met, Baylor won. And that's Earl Campbell trying to get away from the 20, get upfield, and he did. It looks like he got about six yards on the play. And notice how... Just like uh, <laughs> Jimmy Brown used to do, just right. saunter back to the huddle, saving that energy for the next play. Texas A&M keeps their hopes alive for the Cotton Bowl. Colorado bouncing back after the Oklahoma defeat last year. Kansas upset Missouri. Iowa State hoping for a bowl bid. Texas now second and five from their own 25, leading 19 to nothing. Campbell with 119 yards. And Ansley on a keeper, number seven, stopped by Eichenberg, a senior, number 41, from Houston, playing for Baylor. Except for fumbles, Baylor would still be in the ball game. Now we have a jersey change. McEachern. Here comes Randy McEachern, who quarterbacked the team to a victory over Arkansas that we televised. And he's coming in. We didn't, well, it was very doubtful, but... We had to have a jersey change here, so he's coming in. And the fans cheer. Giving it to Campbell. 
And Campbell gets the first down out to about the 33 for Texas. Freshman Joe Campbell, the nose guard, making the stop. And Campbell now is going to his either fourth or fifth tearaway jersey. The rules makers have tried to make the rules where they would uh, discourage coaches from using it. But Texas has had great success with it. That, that run was set up by the block of Ham Jones, Chris. Washington still leading, still in the hopes for the Rose Bowl. Big win, Michigan over Ohio State. Fireman's fun flashback. You know, sometimes we get overloaded with statistics, but uh, <laughs> this is sort of a cute one, Frank. Well, look here. The you Razorbacks did it. Well, ah, they did it. So their bowl hopes are alive there, Mr. Broyles. And I hope they were throwing oranges out on the field. Oh, today. wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, I have a statistic that's sort of ridiculous, but since jerseys <laughs> are being torn, Campbell averages seven torn jerseys a game. Okay, that's 70. Oh, that's 77 a year at $8 a whack. That's over 500 But think if he breaks loose against Oklahoma or Arkansas or Texas a and <laughs> because the, the jersey tore, then it pays for it a thousand times. I guess it does. Well, the agility of the Texas cheerleaders here. You'll enjoy their band at halftime. 300 strong. They're supposedly the biggest drum in the world. Eight feet in diameter. I know one school that feels that's incorrect. They feel they have the largest drum. But we know this is a large stadium holding 78,000. There aren't that many here today. Now with 2.14 to go. The first half, it's a first and 10 from about the 32 McEacher. Or correction. Coming back into the ball game is Ansley. Campbell carrying on the play. Before that one, he had 119 yards. Howard Fields makes the stop. So Ansley has a new jersey on, and uh, we're less than two minutes now. There you see him, number seven. And uh, with the carry out to the 36, three more yards by Campbell, it's going to be a second down and seven. Mississippi State finally came back and defeated Mississippi, 18 to 14. In Frost State rivals this weekend. All right, second down and about seven. From the 36 for Texas, leading 19 to nothing. Flag down. Way on the far side of the field. Delay. Delay is right. Delay of the game. So it'll be a third or a second down and 12 coming up. Campbell now with 128 yards, the most uh, yards rushing this year. 213, in fact. Long, the most yards in one game. That doesn't, again, I repeat, that does not mean they're number two <laughs> because they're number one. That a boy. If you think they're not a complete football team, they're second in scoring, fifth in rushing, ninth in total offense. We've already given the defensive statistics and NCAA records. Why is it that all the Cowboys get such pretty girls, Frank? Boy, that one had a pretty one. Their quarterback's in trouble. Well, let's see where he threw, attempted to throw that forward pass. Mike Lockett, the intended receiver from number seven, Ansley. Ansley now in five tries hasn't completed one. There's a better look at him. But they have been passing for 126 yards of ball game. Right. There's his counterpart, uh, Greg Wood of the Baylor Bears. So now with a third down and 12 coming up. With 118 to go, it's 19 to nothing here. Look at the offense in that ball game. Ansley screens it to Campbell. And he does what every smart football player does, just keeps running. He and, does. And lets the official decide whether he's out of bounds. Most coaches think that Earl Campbell is the greatest runner ever to play in the Southwest Conference. Don't believe there's any argument against that. No, I won't argue with him because he has just been phenomenal. Now, back to punt is Constanza. Ted Constanza. Frank, he wasn't really expected to no, be in there. No, he was being redshirted. He's a quarterback that uh, 
had a disappointing year last year, and Freddie was on the red shirt. Howard Fields caught the Constanza punt and is stopped right at about the 26. So, let's see, a minute and one second remaining in the first half. Hope you're enjoying this Texas-Baylor game. It was Rudy Izzard who made the stop. And there you see some of the gleam. One of the many tubas of the 300-member University of Texas show band of the Southwest. And there you see the scoreboard. I've told Darrell that the man, his man's worth at least six points in any ball game. Okay. I want to ask you one of the reasons why. Look at this razzle-dazzle. And wide open is Osborne. He's gone. Well, to recount that accurately, <laughs> Try, as I dare you. <laughs> 8,000 Baylor fans are delirious, that was a 74-yard dipsy doodle if I ever saw one. Chris, I'm not sure what happened. I think it was a reverse. And then they lateral back to the quarterback, Greg Wood, and the man who originally got the hand off of the pitch caught the pass, Hawthorne. Yes, sir, 8,000 fans <laughs> who motored over from Waco, Texas. Well, it's a great moment for them to cheer. 74 yards. Greg Hawthorne getting the touchdown. Wow. So now it's 19 to 6. Bledsoe, number one, trying for the point after it's up and it's good. So it's now 19 to 7. And one blockbuster play put them on the board. That was an incredible play. We're going to look at it again. Here Let's it is. see what happens. He tosses the ball to Seabrook, who hands back on reverse to Davison, who laterals to Woods, who throws to the right half back. Greg Hawthorne, who shows his 9-5 speed, outrunning the Texas secondary. And that is the eighth <laughs> touchdown pass given up by the Texas defense. And look at Mr. Hawthorne. All in the last five ball games. And that was the reason Grant Payne thought that he would have to come out throwing against the Texas defense. 46 seconds now remaining in the first half. Jeff Black will kick off two men deep for the burnt orange jerseys of Texas. We have Wyatt, number 40, and number 22, Thompson. Here comes the kick. From out of the sun into the shadows. Field lights were turned on from at the start of the game, so we have no worry about our lighting here. Let's see that touchdown one more time. That's a little dipsy-doodle play. They, they, Texas plays man-for-man -man secondary, and all this crisscross in the backfield, Chris, they're likely to lose their man, and that's exactly what happened. Hawthorne is wide open, as you can see, and very wisely cuts across the field and outruns, as I said, the second. So the scoring has been Jackson at 231 remaining in the first quarter for Texas. Oh, and then Mr. Earl Campbell came back and scored the, the second one. That was another beauty. And uh, then uh, Ansley, the quarterback, on a sneak. And now Hawthorne. Ansley from the 20, first and 10. Waning second, a loose ball. Campbell losing it. Campbell lost the handle, a hard hit up front, and then Ron Burns recovered it. So the Baylor fans have again something to cheer about because their field position is their, the Texas 26 with a first and 10 and 40 seconds to go. Watch again. It's a handoff. Number 47 strips Campbell of the football and safety Burns recovers it. They had another reverse in the works, but this time it looked like Jackson, had he gotten the ball, number five, he was going to throw it. Arlen Thompson got on top of it in a hurry, and time was called by the Baylor Bears. Baylor felt like their best chance again would get on the scoreboard with some type of trick play. Grant Taft has used trick plays all of his coaching career. Don't forget the fireman's fun flashback coming up. And, of course, the other halftime activities. At the moment, the score is 19 to 7. Heavily favored Texas in the lead, number one in the country. And yet to play Texas A&M, battling to, in 
the last 21 years to win their 12th Southwest Conference title. And Texas A&M owns for the first time since 1912 consecutive victories over the Longhorns. And they're playing at College Station. Okay, there's the back of Grant Taft in his sixth year at Baylor University. And if A&M wins, they go to the Cotton Bowl. Okay. Second down and 18 now for the Baylor Bears, Hawthorne and Seaburn, the setbacks. Wide set behind the quarterback, Wood. There was a mix-up. Hawthorne and Wood collided. But Wood hung onto the ball, a loss on the play. Henry Williams pinched in from his defensive left end position. Baylor again calls timeout. Uh, on the clock here, we have 17 seconds in the first half. They were going to tr set up a pass to the split end, throwing in behind Texas cornerback, but they had a fake in the line, and Texas penetrated, broke the blocking scheme of Baylor's line to the point that he did not have time to get it away. Baylor thus far in the game has 54 yards rushing, Texas 193, most of, most of which being gained by Earl Campbell. Again, the Baylor coaching staff and their quarterback, Greg Wood. We're in Austin, which is the capital of this great state of Texas. Baylor would like to get a field goal out of this in any event. They can't get a touchdown. Don't forget the ABC News special, hosted by Harry Reasoner tonight at 7. 7 to 7 30. Batted away by number three, Derek Hatchett, intended for number 19, Tommy Davidson, on a third and 22, so it's going to be a fourth down and 22. With Anwar Sadat's visit to Israel. And earlier, before we came out to the ballpark, we saw IBC News live coverage of President Sadat's arrival. And truly, it was one of the great historic live coverages of anything. So I'd like to salute ABC News. It was a great newscast. All right, number one is Robert Bledsoe on the field goal. Uh, 45, a 55-yard kick with the wind to his back. Attempt. But the score remains 19 to 7, and of course, the man that set 67 yards is on the bench for Texas, Russell Erksleben. But there's a man in Fayetteville named Steve Little. Right. Frank. Steve a kicker. Little, he is an excellent punter. He's averaging 43, 44 yards a punt. Uh, he's about fourth in the nation, and he tied. Erks Laban's field goal record of 67 yards in the Texas ball game. You know, that game we covered, we just couldn't believe the length of the field goals. And then when Little came on to do a 67-yarder, it was one of those incredible afternoons. Now here today, six seconds remaining. Memorial Stadium, Texas 19, Baylor 7. And Texas has the ball, first and 10, at their own 20. Big 74-yard Hawthorne touchdown. Gave Baylor its only score, and now the group forces at halftime. We'll see a fireman's fun flashback and lots of music. We'll be back with that fireman's fun flashback and those other halftime activities after this message. Hey, boss! The Texaco guy's at it again! What? Now what? It's a... It's an antifreeze wiper refill special. One gallon of Texaco antifreeze coolant plus two wiper blade refills. Only incredible. A pair of refills alone can cost up to $5. Yeah. How can he do it? Because I'm a good guy. Texaco antifreeze and wiper refills at a special low price. At your participating Texaco good guys. <laughs> 